Okay. Hello. Uh, we are going to study in, in the Predictable Machine Learning chapter of this book. The objectives are understand the importance of interpretability in machine learning models, learn about global and local interpretation, understand the trade off in interpretation, learn about model specific implementations, understand the causes of permutation based feature importance, understand the concept of partial dependence, learn about individual conditional expectation. So the introduction, models interpretability are crucial for business adoption. So if you want a business to use a model as the core of the business, they need to understand it. For model documentation to explain how we took the decisions, how we are using this data and no other one. Uh, regularly, regularly over -signed. And human acceptable and trust. So you want a department to use your model, yeah. And also over science, like uh, checking the ethics of, of your model. So interpretable machine learning provides a solution to explain different levels. Global interpretation explains how the models make predictions based on a holistic view of the features. They can explain which feature are the most influential via feature importance that's the methods that we use and how influential variables drive the model output, feature effects. Lo the, the local interpretation becomes very important when the first, when the fed or most influential model feature doesn't, uh, the most mo uh, doesn't the big feature, Maybe I have wrong here, but it's like when you cannot explain why we have particular prediction based on the main features. Uh, maybe that's really helpful when you have four positive or four negative uh, values. You want to explain, you really need to understand why is the model taking consideration to to have that bad prediction. That, that's really useful in those cases, but also to explain uh, why we are predicting high values or lower values for a particular value you are using for a regression. Uh, Log interpretable models are not to explain, explain uh, agnostic explanations like line. We also have a uh, Chapley values and localized stepwise procedures. So they are the, the main ones for, for, for explaining local values. We're going to use this package, split the data and, and save as H2 file, as uh, to data frames. And we are going to train the model. In this case, we are going to use an ensa the sample model last chapter. That is a really good continuation. Like we were, okay, they, there's no any <laughs> interpretation for this model. They explain, no, we can use a, another technique to interpret this one. So it's a really good new for a stack model. And also we can select the the highest and the lowest predictions to understand why is driving each of them. And let's understand the trade trade off. In Project we have been using model specific uh, interpretation of data closest to the model performance, but you will be facing the next limitation. No models have a method. For example, stack model we trained during last chapter. Comparing feature importance across models is difficult since you are comparing different measurements. But you're using a, a diagnostic one, you can, you can solve that problem. There is no best approach. 
The only way to full trust our model interpretation is to apply multiple approaches, including model specific and model agnostic results. So yeah, it's like interpreting a model is not like, ah, we use one technique and that's it. So you need to validate and check with using the agnostic and model specific is possible. If not, many diagnostic because sometimes the, the results differ. There are not the same results, but and you need to understand why that's happening. So I took some time to, to, to read the documentation of the the VMP package for model specific. And we can see that some description of the methods were uh, some use permutation, sampling with a replace with re, with a replacement. So it's like we have a, a really good picture in the next one because permutation is the, is the next topic. So I, I have this column with this order. And then we sample, we are replay. So we are, you are not going to repeat any of them, but you are going to change the order. And that like cancel the effect of that column. That's a general general technique, but also some of them use that. So for you are using the LM function to create a linear model, they are taking the importance of the bar base of the T statistic. If you use GLNet for last aggregation or regularization functions, they use the coefficient. So in that case, scaling the the feature are really important to have all the features in the same scale. If you are using the ELF to to perform a march a, a march a model. We can count the number of segments that use that that feature. We also can calculate the decrease or in the RSS of isocent. But to me, maybe the most interesting one, instead of using that the RSS is using the GCV is like a fast way to calculate a cross validation. Uh, leave one out cross validation. It's an approximation of the leave one out cross validation. So it's more general. So I think that's maybe the it's a really good way to to select the feature that are more important because it's more general. But you you want to interpret in your particular model, yeah, they are more close to the model. But you have more options. There are powerful simple trees. Soon the goodness of the split. Uh, so that that's the reference that I use to to know that oh this feature more important or that all the base of how much it reduced. For random forest, uh, we have also two options in in the type. So we can use the mean decrease in accuracy because the predict back our error rate or MSE for each tree, then repeat the process after permuting each predictor variable, calculate the difference between both errors, take the average over all trees, and normalize the result using a standard deviation of the differences. So yeah, this is a really general way to do it. It's really close to the next to the next topic. And also, instead of using that process with the mean and square error, we can use with the node impurity using the Gini index. So yeah, we we need to explore both for the gradient boosting machine. If the type is relative influence and the distribution is Gaussian, this returns the reduction of the square error attribute of each variable. Two, the distribution is no Gaussian, returns the reduction of attribute to each variable of some square error. In the predicting 
the gradient of each iteration to report the relative influence of each variable, reducing the loss function. So it's like, a, we have a square error, but also it depends on the, the function that we are using. And also we have permutation. A random permute is per, created variable at a time and computate the associated production of or predictive performance using the entire training data set. So in this case, we cannot use the, the, the GBM. It's not like an approximation of the lift one out. It's like, it's just training data. And the SG boost also have different options. Uh, you know, just reading the this documentation, I find out that SG boost also have a function to to apply linear models, like regular regression, lasso. So yeah, that's really interesting that they have that capacity in downloading the the base package. You know, you don't have that options using tidy models, but if you, you using directly the package, you can use lots of regression directly with ng-boost. So for linear models, the, the important is the absolute magnitude of the coefficients. So just as the same, I use uh, the year net. So they're using the same metric. For three models, uh, you can use the type gain. It gives you the fraction of contribution of each feature to the model based on total gain. So on improvements in accuracy brought, uh, brought by the feature to all the branches is on. Uh, of the corresponding feature split, or we can use type cover. It gives you the number of observations related to each feature. Uh, or we can use of frequency. It gives you the percentage of representing, or representing the relative number of times each feature has been used throughout each tree in the ensemble. So that's the way so he managed like We have uh, error related. And also we have frequency and count. Now we have an idea of how our model based uh, methods of importance. Now we can study a general way, the permutation based feature importance. We can use the method in any model after the assuring that the model isn't overfitting to avoid interpreting noise rather than signal. So if your, if your model is really good to follow with noise, what you would be interpreting is noise, not really the, the things that you are trying to predict. And also, and that's something that I figured out it wasn't part of the book, the feature present have low correlation. To avoid underestimating the importance of correlated features, as permuting a feature we have permuting its correlated pairs won't have a big effect. It's like, okay, I'm canceling one feature, but another feature have the same information on the other side. Uh, the model will say that the, it won't decrease the accuracy too much because it has another reference to predict the same value. So yeah, for interpretability, even though three base metals uh, can have correlated Data features. If you don't have, if you don't have to have, you don't want to have a hard time interpreting them. You better reduce the correlation between features. In me in measures, uh, yeah. It measures features importance by calculating the increase of the model's prediction error by taking the difference of the absolute values or ratios to interpret relative values of a metric like 
RMSE after Bermuda the fissure. I described the, the, the algorithm below, but also we can use this as a reference. Like we have these, these, these original data set. We train our model and we calculate our base error. So that was the picture I found. But, well, this function was the other way around. You would take the software and then minus the base. And then you software, you permute that column, you calculate the same, a different error, and you take the difference, or maybe you can take the radio. And, and that's it, that's a really simple process. And you need to repeat it for each column. And yeah, many packages can do that. So we have the IML, you have the feature importance. So you have several loss functions to select different. You can use the difference or use the radio. The DALETS, the DALETS is a great package, have a great support for tidy models and also have its own book. So yeah, we can really take a lot of advantage of that package. So you have several loss functions. You can use the difference or use the radio. And also you can sample the data if you have a lot, a lot to reduce the time. To in the bit, you can use the bit, and that's also maybe the the meta function. And the function that I use permitted is be permitted as where you can get more of the information here. Support model specific and model announcing approaches, as we have seen before. A custom, so you can really write a function to the loss. And also, also select from several ones. It also performs a Monte Carlo simulation to standardize the product. I don't really know why. This is an advantage, but they do it. It can sample the data. So based on sample size or sample fraction, it can for parallel computation, it you set the parallel ones to true, that is not the, that's not the default. You need to, to set it as true. And okay. And we have a, also, if we want to use this package, we need, for the listed ones to split the data frames into features and, and a response vector. And also to create a custom function to explain how I can use the model and the data to create a vector of predictions. That, that's the, the goal here. For that, let's, we need to create a explainer you put the model, the data, the response, and the prediction. And that would be the interface for the, that would, you would plot, I don't have the plot here because like, I was doing this tonight, uh, this morning, and it takes too much to run. So permutation is a very computer expensive process. So I just, use the what the book have but based on the documentation that's the way that that you can use the the, the package so you find the model the features the response the loss function and the compare your difference of radio and also have a plot function a plot method and here we just need to select the the type for for Dalets and and we can plot and and for B we have the the model the whole data the method the target variable the metric the I ah, I want to use the different the type the number of simulation the fraction to sample the prediction function. And that's the way that we say, oh, this is the most important variable based on permutation. And 
and now we have the partial dependence. I don't know if you have any comments before going to that part related to this method. Uh, Angel, I have one comment. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the H2O, uh, you know, library, it also has uh, certain functions for uh, model explainability. Okay. Uh, so uh, I don't... I, I think they are like more specific, no? I think they are more specific. Yeah, but uh, if they, they use, uh, I know that they use uh, variable importance and also uh, PDPs, okay? Oh, wow. For, uh, for, for, for the explainability. The only thing that I don't remember is that if it works for the stack ensemble, okay? Because if you use the AutoML in H2O, uh, usually you get, uh, two models for uh, for the stack ensemble, but for the particular models, you can get explainability right from the H two O. Yeah, I think I saw here. It mentioned mm -hmm. the in the documentation. I think it's most like model specific one. Here you have an interface yeah. and. Yeah, here the, the function you are mentioning. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think a really first look would be this one, but right. I think they don't have a uh, agnostic ones. That that may be the point. And this article that I saw is more like for three base models. I don't know if they do for other models because, but they yeah, that's a really good point. They uh, they they uh, have these functions. Yeah, the, if if you are using H two O, at least you have that uh, that option also. Yeah, and you can also access to the same interpretation using uh, the BMP package. So mm -hmm. you have access to that to that information that right. based to the model. So yeah, you you have the two options. You can use the the function also. You can use the bit, and you are using the same the same interface. Yeah, that, that, that's really a good point. So, um, partial dependence. Uh, it allows us to understand the response variable changes as we change the value of a feature while taking in, into account the average effect of all other features in the model when the model has a uh, weak interaction between features. That's the limitation of this approach. It doesn't capture the interactions and maybe you have interactions, you won't have the best results. So the first step is to explain the, the feature and uh, the feature that we want to explain in J equal space values. For example, if we said a uh, 20, for the for this leaf area, uh, we could use them, we could get it using this code. So it, this is the mean value, the max value, the variable, and how many steps do you want? The length punto out part, and you can have twenty values all the way around. So that that that's the concept. You you are splitting your your feature in in J parts. And then you need to make J copies of the original training data. It's copy, uh, in, for each copy setting the ground leaf area with a with corresponding value. For example, the value for the first copy is 334 and the second is 584.55 until changing the last copy to uh, 5095. Predicted the outcome for each observation in each of the J copies, taking the average of, the, of all the values and plotting the results. That's the way. So you have one copy of the data, you change 
the, that variable all the way around with those that value. The second copy, you change the data. And the last copy, you change the data. You, you take the mean of the predictions and you are plotting each of the predictions in this way. A really simple approach. So that let's have the own implementation and also the deep, the deep, and the PDP package that had the one that we have been using. And as we are using a stack model, we need to define a custom function to handle that and have the grid and here we can see the resource. And also have a function to, to, to plot the, the resource. So basically, as we increase the leaf area, yeah, it is higher the, the price. Uh, it, oh, we can also use this metric, the partial dependence, uh, as a feature importance one. So we can assure that the fee we can ask, assure that those features with larger marginal effect on the response have a greater importance. This is really useful to create plots, uh, create plots of both feature importance and feature effects. So you can use the the film method. That's the, the new method. The, the book said that it's PDP, but it was the pre-created. And you can use the film and select the feature that you want to use. And you need to set ECE, that's the other method, to false because the, the, the default is the other one, it's not the PDP one. So you can, yeah, it's, this is true for this method and the next method that, that we are going to study. Individual conditional expectation. The ICE plots can help to highlight interaction between features and showing the predicted response of each of the instance separately. So basically use the same method to the to the dependent plot, the uh, partial plot, partial dependence. But instead of average the total, you will keep all your observations in the in your plot. Uh, an important technique that they explain is the centering. So in center, you the cues uh, at the minimum value of each feature makes it easier to see how effects change as feature value increases. Highlight a little heterogeneity observations that there is from the general pattern that the first we can see how this I know part of the general pattern so yeah if you have if you after applying this method have a chart like this that you don't you don't see any effect you can try to to center uh, to center that that plot just using center equals true. And we can get this, this really nice uh, plot. We can see, for example, an increase, but the increase is not as big as we saw before. So the PDPs and IC cools and the CI cools, that is central cools, for classification model, a typical plotting and logic type scale to facilitate interpretation. So basically, we try to uh, to to do our best to interpret this model, even though we need to to change the scale sometimes. And maybe this is the best part of this presentation. And uh, we will continue next week because this chapter was really long to explain. And have you have any doubt or comments?
Hello? You with me? No, we're good. 